I may hate drama in my life, but I love talking about the drama in yours. I may watch too much reality TV, but you're listening to me talk about it. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are at episode four, people. This is Fumi. And it's B. Hello. And you have tuned in to Reality TV, where we are bringing reality to reality TV. Yes. yes How was your are. week? I'm good. Can't complain. Really good. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, good. it's been fine. <laughs> yeah. Just one of those days. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Today has just been like, you know what? I'd rather not be on this computer while I'm working this nine to five right now. I'd much rather be like on a beach relaxing somewhere where it's warm or getting my nails done. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Just anything else but work. Yeah. One of those days. Or had some tacos. That would have been nice. Yeah, some good old tacos, but yeah, well, I'm glad your week was okay. <laughs> yeah. Between yeah. last episode and this episode. Yeah. How was yours? It's been busy and in a sense of, you know, doing everything for this wonderful podcast mm-hmm. and um, taking care of Malachi and, and all that. So I... Don't believe I came across any kind of weird encounters the past (laughs) seven days. That's always Um, good. Yeah, I did see the bitch at Winco, but she... (laughs) (laughs) she, Still on her job. Yeah, she was actually on the regular check stand. She wasn't (laughs) dealing with the the self-checkout, so I was Ah. pretty pretty happy about that because I didn't didn't feel like dealing with that. But, I mean, other than that, my week has been pretty... Good. I mean, not super crazy busy to where I would want to pull out my hair, but a good busy, like a good, nice, productive type of thing. Well, that's always good. That is always good. Yeah, but it was um, an okay week yeah. when it comes to reality TV. Mm-hmm. Um, we had a premiere that yes. actually just came on last night, recording this on the Tuesday for those of you that don't know. And Vanderpump Rules, it's a spinoff, in a sense, of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. And it's the, I want to say the sixth season um, premiere. And (laughs) it made me laugh. Only because there's a lot of stupid stuff being done. Not because there's something actually funny, but it's just (sighs) one of those things. And I know last season it was... Tom and Katie, well, Schwartz and Katie's wedding. And towards the end of the season, Lisa came up to the Toms, which is Sandoval mm-hmm. and Schwartz. And it was like, hey, I want to do a bar. Wanted to see if you guys wanted to be like minor partners. Are you interested? We're even going to call it Tom Tom, which is. Yeah. It's catchy, but it's like <laughs> the laziest name right, of all ever. time. <laughs> It's like, oh, we're just going to name it Tom Tom. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, <laughs> Sandoval kind of got a little snippy. And, okay, I understand him being concerned as a, a minor business owner. And minor is, it seems minor, but he has to put in $100,000 right. towards their share, him and, and, and Schwartz. So he was airing out his grievances to his girlfriend, (laughs) Ariana, and lo and behold, Miss Vanderpump and Mr. Vanderpump were like around the way and overheard everything he was saying and was like, oh, all right, well, I can understand you having concerns because you're you're putting a lot of money to her, $100,000, probably like $2. Yeah. But why don't you air these grievances to the actual person? Right. If you want to be a business owner. Yeah. Ultimately, Ariana can just give you support, but she can't really Fix do anything. Yeah. So, and it was just weird. He was like, are you not going to do this and do that? And Lisa was like, oh, sorry that we've opened 33 restaurants and bars. <laughs> <laughs> we have so much experience to where you have to question us. Right. Yes. I mean, 
if I'm putting all this money into a business and I'm going to be a minor partner that I was axed from a very successful business owner and they have all this experience, I don't think I would necessarily have much to say. Yeah. I'm letting you guys know right now, this is going to be an episode where Fumi does most of the talking. I'm not in a big talking mood. But yeah, no, you're right. (laughs) I'm listening. I'm listening. And I get you. And I follow you. It's just been one of those Tuesdays. All right. (laughs) All right. So um, moving on. Um, She is in a new relationship. Mm. And... Um, I don't know why. (laughs) She, I don't even think she knows why, so, you know. She thinks that she's in the best relationship of her life. This is what she's wanted for the past 10 years. She's with this amazing, amazing man that she dated on and off between, what did she say? Like, before 2010 and dating her husband yeah she said she pretty much said she said her boyfriend was the last person she slept with before she got with shay and the first person she slept with after shay wow must be fate yeah and (laughs) it's just i don't know she seems like she likes to be in a relationship but she doesn't really know that it's not a good time to be in a relationship yeah i don't think she really knows much of anything about relationships um i hate to just say that oh she's young so she doesn't know because there are young people that actually seem to be smarter than her but um just from how she handled her marriage to now um She just seems like she just doesn't have a concept of what a relationship or even a marriage entails. She is the perfect example of you're getting married because you want a husband, because it sounds nice, because you get to have a wedding, you get to have a ring, Mm -hmm. or oh, you have a boyfriend because you like what, you know, what having a boyfriend is, but you don't actually know how to actually maintain that or just go about responsibly doing that so you know she'll learn i mean i guess you would have thought brandy glanville's husband gave her enough practice but (laughs) hey who am i to judge Mm. besides a viewer and that's the main reason why there's a spinoff it's really because of sheena yeah Sheena was one of the people that Brandy Glanville's ex-husband cheated on her with. Mm-hmm. And it kind of bled over and kind of went to Lisa Vanderpump's restaurant. So that's really how the Vanderpump rules was birthed, in a sense, was because yeah. of Sheena. So maybe she feels some sense of entitlement of her... Thank you, ...affair-esque ways. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess her affair, like, helped her get money later on. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, she swears up and down that she did not know or anything, so I I will give her that benefit of not knowing, but just seeing the way she handled But her. did she not know she was sleeping with a celebrity? Yeah, C-list celebrity, but still celebrity nonetheless. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't, you know. I don't know. I just, even when she sat down to have that conversation with Brandy, she was very like, I thought I was his girlfriend. I thought we were in a relationship. And I remember Brandy was like, well, how did, well, how did you think you were in a relationship when he kept you as a secret? And she was like, we went on public dates. He took me on vacations. I've met friends. I've met other family. Mm -hmm. And it was like, oh, he was really... I don't, you know, hey, that's neither here nor there, I guess. <laughs> but um, but hopefully is, she learned. I, don't, I just, I don't know. I hope she gets it together. Uh, she won't, but. I feel like the money from the show kind of doesn't help. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They get, you know. I mean, they're still in their, you know, apartments. Yeah. None of them have a house, but Lisa. Right. It seems like none of them. Well, I'm not going to say none of them. I guess they can continue to afford those apartments in Hollywood. Um, 
Well, yeah, they can definitely afford them now. Yeah. But getting a house over yeah. there is like 10 times worse. Like, they so definitely they don't make as much as like the kids from the hills. Like, you've seen how right. their lives, like, season one, okay. By season three, they all were like, oh, y'all are making big bucks. I well, think, yeah, yeah, but most of them, those parents actually want, could help. Yeah. If they wanted to. Yeah. Didn't some of them get, like, a parents help them get them an apartment or something? Like, I think after Lauren was the only one who was, like, well off. Heidi's family was okay. Mm-hmm. Audrina was okay. Mm-hmm. But, I, but you know, Audrina was the only one who actually, like, had a job at a record company from, like, the first episode so i guess you could say like she worked Mm -hmm. to live her life or whatever Mm -hmm. but i think besides lauren probably like spencer and brody were like the only ones that were truly well off oh yeah yeah especially brody especially what is spent i know we're going into a different show but it's it's reality tv related (laughs) what do spencer parents do i don't know but i know he he did go to school with the Olsen twins. Um, him and Brody had been friends since they were like little kids. Ah, so they were in the same area. Yeah. So they must have had to be. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes sense. You can only have certain friends if in, you're in, in a, a certain yeah. area or close by. Exactly. Yeah. Anyway, going back to, you know, <laughs> 12 years later. Right. <laughs> pump rules. But yeah. And then so... She had a birthday party, and she introduced Lisa to her boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Lisa does care about Sheena, so she was like, you know, I hope you're worth, you know, my girl. I care about her and all that kind of stuff. And she was like, he's the best thing that's ever happened to me. And she was like, like, wasn't your husband just the best thing that ever happened to you like like, six months ago? You can't say that because you were just married to somebody else. She was like, still are. Well, I think now they're officially divorced. I think now in present time, they're officially divorced, but at the time they weren't. Yeah. They were still legally married. And she's like, well, that wasn't, I wasn't supposed to get married. She's like, and then it cut to Lisa's interview. Like you just said last season that, he was all that she dreamed of. Like, right. you know, my accent is horrible. But that's what she was like. Oh, we're just so happy. When, we, when he kisses me, it's like the first time all over again. It's just so amazing. And it's like, okay, now you're doing it with this guy. Yeah. So is there something else with this guy that you don't want to remember? Because you said you've been on and off. Right. So then, yeah, why did you guys break up and you ended up with Shay if he was so great? What time? heals all wounds right like what time brought you guys back together like no you broke up with your husband and he was still there somehow some way and i feel like she always continued to talk to him i wouldn't doubt it even if it was like a a genuine like hey how are you friendship or something friendship but it's still somebody you were in a relationship with that you just kept in your pocket right And then once, you know, her marriage ended, she was like, she probably ended so fast, too, because she was like, I got somebody waiting on me. I got somebody waiting waiting on me, me. (laughs) and this new season's about to start filming, and I need to show the viewers that I got a new man, (laughs) so out with the old and in with with the the new. new. Like, she's just stupid, and I don't even know her, so that might be a reach, but I, I don't think it is. I think I'm pretty accurate. It might be one of the most accurate things I've said all week, so... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know this whole cast they're like a poor version of gossip girl i don't think i ever saw gossip girl oh you're missing out it well, was you... like their shenanigans was acceptable because you know they're rich ah them they're just they're waiters got more money than me but not rich <laughs> <laughs> I mean, probably our our salary. Yeah, it's <laughs> probably higher. <laughs> but oh, yeah. their show, you take this that show true. away. You know what? This is very true. <laughs> yeah. They're only getting money <laughs> from the, the actual show. show. If they right. were still regular schmegular degular bartenders. Wait, bartenders and waitresses at Sir Pump and Villa Blanca, we definitely would be making more money right. than them. So right. yeah, thank you for Lisa correcting. wouldn't be asking for a minor investor of a hundred thousand right. dollars. Yeah. But you know. 
And then, but and you know what? Kudos to you, Sandoval, because you said in the episode that you live in a rent control building. And right. I'm like, no you wonder you've been in that apartment for 12 years. It's rent controlled. Mm-hmm. Yes. Stay there as long as possible. Get the fuck out, Kristen. I don't know what you thought. <laughs> Wait, who? Kristen. Oh. And they broke up. Oh, yeah. He was like, <laughs> you're is, moving out. <laughs> this is my apartment. We're broken up. Please, Please leave. leave. Mm-hmm. Go away from me with this. <laughs> Go away from me from Get with out. this. <laughs> In the words of Phaedra Park. <laughs> Go away from me with this. But yeah, so you there is hardly any rent controlled buildings in LA County left. Yeah. Um uh, we're based in Vegas now, but we just literally moved from LA within the last five months. One month for her, five months for me. So we're still pretty connected with LA. Yeah, just a tad. Just a tad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, kudos to you. And so we're going to cut to Sheena's party. No. So before even getting there, Sandoval heard a rumor and told Ariana that he heard a rumor about, about Jax. That Jax banged <laughs> Faith. Who is one of the waitresses? You've seen her here and there throughout yeah. the seasons, um, but she works at the restaurant. Mm-hmm. And Ariana was like, "Oh my god, are you serious?" So they get to the party, and it spreads like fucking wildfire. Yeah, like high school, very high school, like lunchtime. <laughs> hey, did you did you guys hear? Like, oh yeah, all yeah. of them are outside of the classroom, so now they can talk amongst each other right. because they're all together at lunch. You heard about it in class, but couldn't really talk about it. But outside of class, during like that ten minute break, <laughs> yeah. And so, Sandoval, yeah, Sandoval told Ariana, and then Sandoval pulled Jax to the side. Said, hey, I heard a rumor. If if I tell you that I heard a rumor, do you know what it's about? He was like, no. Now, for those of you who have watched Pump Rules from the beginning, you kind of know when Jax is lying. <laughs> Jax is a liar. He's a fuckboy. He's up there with Peter Guns, minus all the kids. Who else? Cisco. Pretty much the fuckboys of reality TV. Jax is up there. Oh, yeah. For He's sure. pretty high. He's in the top four. Five, definitely. Yeah, it's. He's like, no, I've ne- I've never been with Faith. I, I've You're been. <laughs> I've been faithful to to Brittany, and as they're talking, a friend of Brittany's who I don't recognize, so he's not mm. like an official cast member or anything. He was like, so um, I don't know if you heard, but <laughs> <laughs> there's like. People are saying that Jack slept with Faith. And then Brittany looked like, wait, are you fucking kidding me? Like, not, you know, usually when you have full and utter trust in your partner, they're good. And you, they, you, someone tells you that there's a rumor about them. Yeah. You're going to be like, no, that's some bullshit. He wouldn't do that to me. Just yeah. like Dr. Heavenly said about her husband. Right. right? She was like, nope. Somebody told me. I'm like, nope, daddy wouldn't do that to me. So, And if he did, it was her fault. <laughs> okay. I'm beat that well, ass. You know? <laughs> at least you're honest about your delusions. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, and then as they're talking, Schwartz finally comes because Stassi and Katie weren't invited. Apparently in between seasons, Katie took something of Sheena's, what she said the wrong way. So now they're not back to being friends. I'm sorry. Anybody who's a bridesmaid, my wedding, I expect you to be, you know, friends with me. Right. Eight months later. I mean, if her marriage didn't last, then why does the friendships to the people that were in the wedding, the person I married, his ass was disposable. So you bitches can go too. (laughs) (laughs) Am I lying? (laughs) Out with the old, in with the new. <laughs> These are facts. <laughs> in the words of Sheena herself. And right. I mean, I would have never been friends with Katie to absolutely begin with, so that wouldn't have never even been a problem of mine. I wonder if te- Tequila Katie's going to come up this season. Oh, now that's somebody that needs to be in AA. 
See, once again, there's another trend. Another girl who treats her boyfriend like shit. And And somehow she, I mean, he treats her like shit too, but, you know. But his is like stupid guy, weird shit. You know, not like I'm trying to eat you alive. Yeah. (laughs) So Schwartz comes in late and hugs Brittany like, hey, how are you? She was like, well, apparently (laughs) Jack has slept with He's like, Bitch, can I capitalize on my free drink can I before breathe? you just throw all this tea in my face? I haven't even seen the birthday girl yet. <laughs> <laughs> you telling me he's like, oh, oh, and then he went to Lisa like, I don't know. There's so many people that's <laughs> free. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> and Lisa's there, so and of course she has this bedazzled, beautiful, beautiful. off as crystals right all over her mask because it was a masquerade party of course it was just like she's like i'm not like you cheap peasants <laughs> who got your shit at party city i'm having someone flown in from europe to hand make mine from sand that's imported from the egypt pyramids <laughs> for a 15 minute scene because you know she probably was not even at that whole thing hell no she wasn't She's Probably like, pulled up in her white Bentley. The original person with a white Bentley, Kim Zolciak. And <laughs> I was like, okay, keep the car on, Jiggy. <laughs> Let me go in here and be around these stupid poor people and pretend that I like them and actually care. And I'm only here because they're my employees. You're I need right. to make sure they're not doing stupid stuff. Right. But if they do, let's hope it makes it on camera. Because <laughs> that makes me more money. <laughs> like, we know what's going on, Lisa. <laughs> you don't actually care about them. You care about them. But you don't care about them. I don't know if y'all heard the quotation marks in my voice. <laughs> care. I think, I think we did. <laughs> so, um, so, Faith was there. Oh, yeah. So, while... <laughs> Sandoval's talking to Jax and the friends talking to Brittany that's talking to Schwartz. You got Faith on the side talking to James. And, te- and le- okay, you before. Picture it, Sicily, 1912. <laughs> A dark room with people with masks revealing right. their identities. And. It's Each just... corner of the room, tea is being divulged. <laughs> it's slowly seeping from each corner to make its way to the center of the room. Where it explodes a big pot of mess. And there's no honey or lemon in it. <laughs> so she's Faith is telling James... And I don't know if it's any significance, but this time it's a black girl. <laughs> right, right. I was like, oh, oh, he don't discriminate. Yeah, well, it's like, I me, mean, it's a black girl. Wait, right. what? <laughs> I was like, um, I've never found him attractive, and I still don't. So him being with a black girl does absolutely nothing for me, but good to know. <laughs> <laughs> and she sounded like, yeah, it just happened so fast. Apparently... She's a night nurse or something like that for old people. So, grandchildren, if you're listening to this and you have a night nurse on duty at your parents' or grandparents' facility, make sure their name's not Faith. (laughs) (laughs) Because apparently she will have people come over and fuck them in front of your grandmother So while they're sleeping. (laughs) It's just like, wait, what? Yeah. No, I haven't even had a guy in my grandma's house. Like, go yeah. away from me with this. You're going to respect my elders. Right. Um, and she's like, yeah, so I invited him over because he, like, DM'd me. What's up? See, DMs get people in trouble. And I just like, oh, you can come over. So she was bold enough to give the address of where she was, which seems as if it wasn't her place. Right. HIPAA. Right? HIPAA? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, HIPAA. that is HIPAA. Mm-hmm. That's totally against Girl, HIPAA. Girl, you shouldn't have said that because what if <laughs> your patient's grandchildren <laughs> really watch that show? It's like, um, mom, is that Faith? The girl that, like, helps grandma? <laughs> Was she in her house? Apparently she fucked this one guy. Like, <laughs> what are you gonna, I mean, in front of grandma. <laughs> she was sleeping. What if grandma saw it? <laughs> That's going to make her t- 
ticking ticker ticking boom boom i told you mom we should not have hired a colored (laughs) like you know and then it's like, well, damn, Faith is fucked up for all the other black night nurses. Right, never again. <laughs> it's so sad. Never and again. And he came over and they were like, yeah, you know, something, something. It just happened so fast. Jay's like, wait, what, 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 what happened so fast? It's like, I mean, we kind of hooked up. Oh, my gosh. She's like, shh, shh. And she was like, hey, you know what? I, I, I'm late. Like. <laughs> It sounds like such a like girl nineties movie. Like you know, I'm, I'm, I am I'm not here to plug abortion at all. But girl, <laughs> it's already been known. It's Jax's baby in the world that is reality TV. That Jax is one you don't want to have a kid with. Mind you, he already got somebody else oh, pregnant. Oh, yeah, and lied about he was it. With it was a stripper in Vegas, wasn't it? It was somebody in Vegas. Somebody. I don't know if Oh, was she might be here. We got to find her. <laughs> if you're listening, <laughs> I would love to get the real tea. Right. <laughs> you can remain right. anonymous. We don't need to. We're not, right. You know, you can say my name is, you know, Right, we can't Schnepony. see your face. I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah, since we're in Vegas. Oh, we need to find CT, too. Yes, CT, if you're... He probably isn't listening, but no. if somebody who knows CT is listening, <laughs> we're gonna find him <laughs> one day. So if you see two little black girls, just don't don't be concerned. Yeah. <laughs> so there's this whole thing, and of course, Brady's like, "Where's Jax? Where's Jax?" And so she finds Jax. He's like, "So what the fuck's going on? Like, <laughs> <laughs> what you think?" <laughs> First off, when y'all gonna learn, stop letting y'all man go on vacation without y'all. Because it seems like whenever someone goes somewhere without one of their girlfriends, there's a rumor that pops up that somebody else who ain't their girlfriend got gets fucked. You know Especially what? in this show. Right. They start changing up. I think the women need to start cheating on the men. Ariana, just go cheat on Tom. I mean, I like them as a couple, but well, yeah, I like it would just make it more interesting because it's always the girls crying over like these men. Just try something new. Yeah. Stassi <laughs> over Jax, Kristen over Sandoval. Sandoval over Kristen sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah. And then you got Carmen and Jax. Remember oh, he was yes, kind of going back yes, and forth between yes. two? Yeah. Um, that they cry and Brittany has cried over Jax. Yeah. And Katie has c- cried over Schwartz. Mm-hmm. I don't think Ariana cries at all. I like I Ariana. I do too. That's why I don't think she she's cry at like, all. she reminds me of an, she's kind of like a pretty version of Grumpy Cat. <laughs> <laughs> like, when she um, got confronted by like Stassi or something, she's like, are you done? Yeah, like, are you done? <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because she's like a white girl. Yeah. So you know, I feel like she wanted to be like these annoying ass white girls. <laughs> like, she did. Just... Didn't she call somebody a single white female though? Uh, yeah, she did. She did. <laughs> yeah. When she last she season, hilarious. when she was talking with Stassi, and she's like, oh, "Why are you guys? Why are you getting so emotional? We're just talking, like, right? <laughs> like what?" Oh. And that made her like more emotional because <laughs> it's nothing that makes somebody. <laughs> Piss them off is you're all worked up and mad and they're not mad at all whatsoever that's gonna piss you yeah. off more like you know be mad be be you know something make like, my tears worth something right now no no ariana gives zero <laughs> negative 10 she's bucks. literally only there so she won't get fired <laughs> <laughs> like i'm just here to do these things make my drinks and that's it yeah so um I totally forgot what we were talking about. Um, oh, Brittany confronts Jax. Okay, so Brittany confronts, confronts Jax. So then everybody gets in a group. It's Jax, Brittany, Sandoval, Kristen. Okay, Kristen. She goes up to Kristen like, how dare you? Like, Oh, yeah, to Jax. Yeah, and Jax is like, wait, you, what? Like, like, what are you doing? It's not. How many times is she going to get involved with everybody else's drama when she was the main person fucking with Jax a couple seasons ago? Right. And lied about it. The one time Jax was honest. Yeah. And he's like, I've never slept with Jax. And that was started off as a rumor. Yeah. 
So of this story only, is none of y'all can keep y'all fucking mouths shut. Because so why so do y'all like, keep having sex with each other, thinking it's gonna be my little secret? Well, it's not even that. It's because, hey, you know, you know what happened last night. But you know what? <laughs> and none of them, I never hear the magic words of "Don't tell nobody." <laughs> like I have yet to ever hear. So don't tell nobody. They just like. So, yeah, I cheated on Katie last night with four different girls. Then that person goes and tells somebody, and it's like, well. But you know L.A. is like living in a world where you have to let everybody know everything. It's hard to not to keep something to yourself. And it's just, you know, the only person I really see them keeping things to themselves in this cast is probably Ariana. Yeah. And Lala. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the only two. James is like, guess who got his dick up yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> like, was that your first time? Huh? You're a little too happy about it. For okay. it. <laughs> Come check out my BMW. It's like, it's like, it's a regular entry level. <laughs> it's a three series. There's like, no. It's not even. Okay. All right. There's no features that like <laughs> are of this gear. Like, <laughs> yeah. Everyone's like, look what I'm doing. Yeah. Look what I banged. Like. <laughs> Yeah. All right, calm down. You act like you didn't have sex before. Yeah, so. if I was like, I would have took that to my grave. Like, I just did that. You know Especially what? with somebody happened. like Jax. Yeah. You know Jax, no, I take that back. I was about to say, you know Jax wasn't the one who spread that rumor, but he spreads all kind of rumors about, even about himself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who said he spread a few seasons about us? Brittany, his girlfriend. Oh, yes. He spread yes. a rumor that she got, she and Kristen were eating each other's boxes and he was just there. Yeah. Like, I saw you guys. It's like, why would you, let's why say would it you happened. Spread a roommate, why a rumor would you about say that girlfriend? about your girlfriend? And then why are you still with him, Brittany? It's like, for real, for real. Be, let, and Aren't I they said, like 12 years and apart. I said this today because she had said because I only for some reason all these shows I really only catch the last 10 minutes I guess really in reality shows that's really all you need but she was like if you fucking cheated on me I'm gonna beat your ass first off keep your hands to yourself because if he knock your ass out you done for right two <laughs> I'm taking the dogs and I'm leaving bitch this is Los Angeles California <laughs> you're not just upping and leaving with no dogs that that one bedroom is an automatic what two grand a over month? there yeah about two yeah grand. like pretty much your whole and I hate to say it but that's what happens when you are a kept woman mm. <laughs> you pretty much everything you have out in Los Angeles you kind of owe it to Jax being on this show that gets you your paycheck mm. Jax where you live Jax those breast implants you just got two seasons ago. Jacks, like those dogs that you probably gonna take. Jacks, your spinoff show, which honestly even got you and your family a check. Jacks. <laughs> so you might want to sit down, keep calm, buy him some condoms, and just let him be. And just say, well, if you're gonna do it, please don't tell me. Y- yeah. Or don't let it be all. Like, and don't out. let them bitches feel comfortable enough to where they can tell other people. Just have that that kept conversation with him because let's just be real. You ain't going nowhere else. You can't afford to go nowhere else. You're not that interesting to where if you and Jax break up, it's like, ooh, we got to keep you on this show. It'll be out with the old, in with the new, in the words of Sheena, in the actions of Sheena. I damn. When I first heard it, I was like, oops, Jax did it again. <laughs> He, he played, played with, with your badge. <laughs> play with your badge. Got lost in the game. And got somebody pregnant. Oops. <laughs> you. Yeah. So, yeah. She's like, well, I moved all the way out here to be with him. Yo, dumb ass fault. <laughs> well, I mean, I can't say that dumb because, I mean, you are getting a check. But that's what happens when you put yourself in a kept situation by a man that is documented on TV that he is a fuck man. And I say fuck man because he's almost 40 and I don't even think he has car insurance. 
<laughs> I don't think he did. <laughs> Remember, he was like, yes. I got a ticket or something. What right. you did? I have insurance. Yes. Or a valid driver's license. Something like that. Or, yes. It was like his parents didn't pay yeah. or stopped paying and he forgot that they stopped exactly. paying. Exactly. Like, so, oh I mean, God. it's one thing. It's like you move to a city and you meet this guy and his friends is like, girl, I don't know. And it's like, well, he seems nice to me. You can literally go back and look at his behavior. It's not even that. <laughs> Everybody, Lisa included, was right. like, "Why are you dating him? Right? What do you see in him? You this know, show. He's a, you're she's friends with. Yeah, the person he cheated no, with. with. Yeah, state with Astasi. Sure is. Everybody, you remember that map you saw online yeah. of like how everyone's <laughs> connected to everybody? Not Stassi my did, Jesus. Dated Jax. Jax cheated on Stassi with yeah. Kristen. Yeah. Kristen at the time was with Sandoval. And Kristen and Stassi were best friends. And so that Stassi shows and Kristen you. were best friends. And Sandoval and Jax were also friends <laughs> because they have been friends much longer yeah. than the group together. Yeah. And yeah, it's like everybody's it's connected to, to somebody. It's just sad. It's and like once ki- again, she thinks she's one of those women thinks that she has the magic vagina to just change all that. No, he might be a little more conspicuous, but I hate to say it, but when you get that old and you still stuck in your ways and he doesn't seem to be changing. You know why I think he doesn't do as much bullshit that he does, even though he still kind of does? Yeah. Because her family is very involved. Yeah. I think because her, her family is involved, he's like... I do have like your mom's right. repetitive talking in the right. back of my head. So I'm not going to fuck this bitch today. But I'm right. probably fucking like two Right. Because I think even to a certain extent, like Stasi's family was involved because he even knew like her little brother and all that stuff. And it was like, yeah, Jax is just, girl, just go get checked. Make sure that you're good and. I'm not even going to say keep it moving because I know your kept ass ain't going nowhere. Just. I mean, which all she's going to do is probably move in with Stassi, which will be mm. fucking weird because that's his ex-girlfriend. Yeah. And remember, she was upset because Jax had emotions about cheating on Stassi yeah. in front of Britney. And Britney yeah. was like, well, you treat me like shit. So why yeah. are you having emotions with her and not like this is just a it's fuck too situation. Much. This would never happen much. in our group of people. <laughs> like y'all get married, yo, one of your bet, one of your two of your bridesmaids is gonna be one his ex girlfriend, the other one that he's fucked more than once, and it it's just way too much messiness. But yeah, so it's pretty much a to be continued type of thing. Um, Ariana and Sandoval getting some pretty big arguments this season, which yeah. is the first. But I mean, yeah, give it up to Sandoval. He always has a place to stay because that is his apartment. Rent control. Rent controlled. He's never leaving that bitch. <laughs> right. And um, but so that was pretty much the first episode of Pump Rules. Um, it's mm-hmm. it's just a lot. It's so different compared to season one. Yeah. So it's it's. A zillion people in like the official photo, right? It's probably at least fifteen people in there, just unnecessary. And then when I put it up on our Instagram and tagged everyone, I tagged like twelve to thirteen people. Yeah. So it's it's gotten big. So, um, moving on to MTV to Team Mom OG it was actually two episodes that came on the other day, and <clears throat> Ryan got out of rehab. Ryan only stayed in rehab for 21 days because apparently he took some courses ahead of his time and he was able to leave early. Does a drug addict that needs to do all of that need to leave early? Look, don't knock his extra credit. He did what he had. His extra credit of being a a, a sober? He did the work. (laughs) He took the classes. He did his online trainings. He did his what? learn sources. <laughs> <laughs> Let him. <laughs> so um, Macy had no idea like how long he was going to be in there. He didn't know that mm-hmm. he got out. She just knew that he got out because he was sending her a whole bunch of text messages like, pretty much, let me see my son. Now, 
you're not going to really want to, me as a mom, if the son, my son's father just got a drug rehab for a addiction that he had for I don't know how long, I'm not about to hand him over to you just because you tell me to. Yeah. I need to be able to know that, okay, you got out of rehab. I need to make sure that you're able to take care of him. You take care of him, not your parents, Jen and right. Larry, like they've been doing since Bentley's birth. Right. You need to take care of him. So he was being very threatening, like, you know what? If you don't bring me my son, you're not answering your phone, I'm just going to come over there and all that kind of stuff. It's just like, um, you have to owe. I had to be like, you know what? You do what you have to do. And right. when you set foot on my goddamn house, I will have my gun ready to shoot you dead. And I feel like they have like a good five guns. Yeah. Just locked up somewhere. Mm-hmm. Because that's, it just seems like that they're that right. kind of couple. But I will shoot you dead, plant some drugs in your car, then call the cops and say that you came over here to cause a ruckus. <laughs> and I had to defend myself. I mean, she has. She would have text message proven. Like, if yeah. you don't answer your phone, I'm gonna come right. over there. Like, okay. Like your your text message seems threatening. Right. So I have every right. To, mm-hmm. You don't have permission to come over here, and I tell you right. to leave, and you don't leave to do whatever the hell I want to. Mm-hmm. A two in one problem. So done. Like I that. will say, Jen was like, well, maybe she wants to make sure that you know you're okay. And he was like, what does that mean? Like, that shouldn't matter. Oh, That's my son. To, I was going to say nigga. <laughs> but like, he wants to make sure you're sober. That rehab work. And then his wife. Enabler. She does not help anything. She makes it ten times, times worse. worse. She has this attitude of, well, you know, Macy's just, you know, doing whatever she wants. And she's just... He's the reason why he feels some type of way and makes him use. And Mm -hmm. she just, you know, tries to control everything. It's like, yeah, I said this last week. I was like, she, you, they're going to try to make Macy the pit, the root of his issues with his drug abusing and everything. And I'm like, it's bullshit, but (sighs) yeah, sucks to see it. So Jen, Larry, Ryan, and Mackenzie get together and just like pretty much it was a conference of talking shit about Macy. And wow. Ryan was like, Well, I'm just gonna go to court. They he she wanted to do Nigga. No, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> he he got out of rehab. It was close to Father's Day. Bentley wanted to give his dad a Father's Day gift. She was like, mm-hmm. Okay, well, it'll be the first time Bentley's been asking about him, right. but I want to do it off cameras. So when Jen told Ryan like oh well she'll come over but she wants to do off camera he was like well, why she wants to do everything else on camera I'm like that it she's thinking about Bentley first right ultimately he knows that you have to go away for some reason I, and, and and then Mackenzie accused Macy of exploiting Ryan's situation so now she says something like I want to do it off camera and now they say it's a problem And so he was like, well, she won't give me my son when I want her to. So I'm going to take her to court. That. How are you going to win anything when you just got out of rehab? I would be, you know what? I will see you in court. That's what she said. So that's it ended. Yeah. I'd be like, I'll see you in court unless you decide to come over here and I shoot you dead. The um the off prefer, camera right. meeting went bad, and then when yeah. they parted ways, that's what he t- told her. She was like, "Okay, I'll see you in court." <laughs> she was like, "They won't even give you half the time that I've given you, right?" Let alone, she's like, "I've just been way too generous in something you don't realize that." And you know, take me to court. So they have been talking. Ryan has been talking on and off for the whole time about going to court. But he's always said, "Like, I don't really want to have somebody else make the decision." But I think people like McKenzie make it worse. Yeah. Because she's like, well, yeah, we can just go to court. And it's like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Done. Right. <laughs> like, you end sh- up in a worse situation. Yeah. You know, Macy, I, I don't condone murder, but <laughs> I mean, I think you should let him come to your house unannounced and just exercise your right as an American. You're Caucasian, you'll walk. <laughs> And just, you know, 
preferably. Maybe make sure you do it while Bentley's at school or something and just call me. There's ways around this. All right. <laughs> just saying. I know people. You do? I do. <laughs> I you. do not know this. Me? <laughs> yeah, we can, we can make this work. Uh, for me, <laughs> wants no parts of this. At least not to where it's on tape. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, it just gets worse and worse when it comes to Ryan. It's like you are a recovering addict that's only been out of rehab for 2.2 seconds and you're demanding, demanding someone to do something for you that it's right. a privilege for. So, no. And Mackenzie, you get on my fucking nerves <sighs> and then so moving on to so Farrah moved in with her dad I'd been like bitch you ain't getting in nowhere till you call me dad uh, right just to be petty how, how <laughs> are you gonna move in my house and you still call me Michael and you have no respect for me and you just apparently she sold her or no she's renting at her Austin home mm-hmm. so she moved in with her fucking dad wow <sighs> I feel like when she's mad at one parent, she always goes toward the, the other, other parent. parent. Because there was another time where she wasn't really talking to Michael, and she was, like, super close with her mom. Yeah. And she goes back and forth. Kind of like... And I'm like, you parents say you guys are tired of the way she talks to you and treats you, but yet you do stuff like this. Mm-hmm. Why is she living with you when she got plenty of coins to take care of herself? He, there was bags and just a horse in the backyard. You, it's him, his girlfriend and fiance. I can't remember mm-hmm. what her status is. Farah, Sophia, seven dogs, and a, and a mini horse. Oh, wow. In a regular schmegular house. Mm-mm. I will say I was surprised. Just throw the whole kid away. Ooh. She never happened. Oh, <laughs> God. I'm just saying. Life is too... Look, people, (laughs) life is too short to be stressed over unnecessary bullshit. And it sounds harsh when you're like, but that's your kid. But this is a very, very special circumstance where it's like she claims up and down that you guys make her miserable. You're this, you're that. You add no value to her life. You're useless and you use her. Like, well, you know what? I'm already, like, probably 50 or 60 years old. I refuse to be a senior citizen, and I'm living the last years of my life being belittled by the person that I bought in the world. Mm -hmm. And I don't have any kids, so it's probably a lot easier for me to say it than someone who actually does have any kids. But... No, especially if you're my kid. I'll probably be in jail for trying to kill you for thinking you can just do me like that. Mom but you know, jail. oh yeah, she just she's that get the type. Done. She's that <laughs> type of kid. Like you put your hands on me, I'm calling the cops. And yeah. she, that's exactly what she did. And when it happened at the time, everybody was like, "Yeah, about time." She's so disrespectful. Respectful. Yeah, and she really did call the cops. Yeah, I and you know, and when I got out of jail, I would have been like. You are officially 18. We have no time. Like, I just, I don't even understand that situation as to how that works. But I guess, you know, him being her dad, he's, no matter how she treats him, he's always going to feel obligated to be there. So, I mean, just know, like, when you die, she's probably not even going to cry. She's probably not going to shed a tear. It's sad to say, but probably She's not. probably going to talk more bad about you. She's probably going to disrespect you. She'll probably be like, my God, you would have to fucking die on the same day that I have to go and do this and that. You know what, fucking Michael? You know, <laughs> like, I'm just, and to her mom, too. Like, you guys literally, yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh Yeah. <laughs> It's sad because this is it's her that's doing all of this. And apparently Simon's still in the picture some way, sh- shape, or form. Uh, I was surprised because Michael did give her advice about Simon. Yeah. And she didn't rip her head off. Yeah. I said, oh. mm. All right. All right. Well, she needs one parent. 
This is true. Right. I if guess. my mom is like, I know that mom, fuck. Yeah. Fucking bitch. Why? I just, I just, I can't. Where, I yeah. Can't. Where does all that anger come from? No, I mean, I, I get where the anger could possibly come from, but a, why do you still hold on to it? Right. And if it still is that prevalent, why are they still in your lives? I, be, I don't know. And you don't even financially, you don't need them. So. Well, yeah, she can have a full time nanny. She can have two yeah. nannies if she wanted to. She has a Maserati. She has a. She had she had a place in L.A. She sold it. She has a house in Austin. She's renting right. it. And then now she's over here looking at, in Beverly Hills with the weird. It was a weird fucking real estate agent. Weird. Yeah. And she seemed like a con artist because she's like, no, we're, this is not for you. We're going to look in Beverly Hills. I'm like, oh, yeah, she's trying to take all your money. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Get the bitch for every cent you can. And she's like holding her hands. She's like, you know, if something happened to you, you know, you know, I will take Sophie. I'm like, who, who are, are you? you? <laughs> it was weird. Oh it was one of the weirdest things. That's who that was? Yes. That was, was the like real estate a agent. friend or something. Oh. It was awkward. And so, but anyway, moving on. Oh, damn. Amber and Matt. So, I would be, first of all, I would handle it a, little, it a little bit differently because I am a little bit older and I've been through some things. So, I would not be holding on to this whole relationship as long as she has. But if a mofo stole or sent $120,000 of you know it's her money. Right. Because it's from the show. And there's and I can't account for it. We have nothing else to talk about. And you guys are both former addicts? Yeah. I, uh, no. No, 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 no. If we are in a partnership, if we're in a relationship, we live together, we have finances together. Right. You need to tell me where my the coins are going. That's... I wouldn't be holding. I, I feel like she's holding on to it a little bit longer than she was. Girl, well, and you should have been holding on to your money a little bit tighter because, uh, I mean, I try to be devil's advocate and think like, okay, you're young, you know, you, you want companionship and you want that, you know, perfect family unit and stuff, but. Uh, I don't know. I just think of the idea of, you know, a man stealing $20 from me gets my blood, <laughs> blood boiling. <laughs> so 120000 that is, that's grounds for like old Amber to come out and beat his ass on camera. She's like, where's the $30,000, bitch? Where is it? It's missing. It was at the reunion. Yeah, like I just... Mind you, they 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 started the new season at the reunion of the last, last season. season. So yeah. this is still, Leading you know, up this to is that. still, yeah, this is still at that time. But yeah. I feel like she only held on to the relationship longer than necessary because there was so much that had to be put into the relationship to begin with. Being that he was much older, they met on social media. There was all these kids apparently that she didn't know about some yeah. of them and. It was just a lot going on from Girl, you ain't you ain't Bill Gates. You ain't gonna be getting teen mom checks forever. So that hundred and twenty thousand dollars, it ain't even like, well, I get that back. You might not. <laughs> he yeah. stole your money. I mean, I know I guess they are over now or whatever, but Oh yeah, you, apparently she's married. She's pregnant with her new boyfriend, and Matt got married like a week or two ago. Okay, well, yeah. um, <laughs> they've both moved on, so that's good. But um, guard your finances a little more closely in the future, Amber. And uh, I don't think she's gonna make that mistake. Yeah, either. don't let no one have you know that pin number. Right. Or that account number because, yeah, I just, oh, I'm sorry. I'm just thinking of me just going to my account thinking I got like 400000 Like, ooh, where am I about to go on vacation? I look and it's like one fifty, And I'm like, wait, 
where the fuck is one hundred fifty thousand right. dollars in my money? Like, right, then that's like. I know I was eating out a lot last week, but goddamn, not, not one hundred fifty thousand dollars worth. Like, like, what the hell? Right, like that come up missing ain't fucking any cheating rumors, any how you treat. You stole my money. We ain't even going to address the other issues. Was it a full cash withdrawal? I, you know, that's what I need to know. Like, is it was it like little chunks here and there? Because I know when I'm with Chase or something, I got alerts. You get like, alerts. I get alert if I make a purchase of over $120. So, like, And I'm guessing she didn't have, like, an accountant or anything like that. Um, but Well, that's the thing. They probably did. But when you have authorized users on the don't account. Don't be put. Oh, my God. Remember, remember in... Damn it. This hey, this is a big rich time. Around power. Thank yes, you. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> remember, like, there was money missing? Yeah. And it's because they both are authorized to sign yeah, yeah, for it. Yeah. They didn't have it to where that it accountant would, have to would tell. call the other yeah. yes, call the other person. I just I So don't, that's probably what happened. They didn't like right. they're not gonna Women, call the other person every single time. Unless uh, she set it up that way. That's yeah. Women don't be so open with your finances. Like, don't. Like, one thing I was always taught, like, from my grandmother on to, like, my auntie and stuff. Like, you, even when you get married and y'all happily married for 20 years, you, I don't know if I'm supposed to be saying this, but you always still have your own checking and savings account that is only for you. You don't just be so, oh, we're in love, so... Mine is yours, and no, because then they will leave you high and dry, and yours is his, and you ain't got shit. Remember like, that was Tony, what Tony did in Girlfriends? Yep. Her husband was in debt, and he wanted to, like, take the ring back and all yeah. that, and then he found out that she had, like, $100,000 in the bank somewhere. He was like, well, oh, we're yeah, in debt, and she was time. like, no, 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 that's my money. That's my money. We're not money. touching that. I've right. had that for a long time. I might help you a little but I'm not. That's not yeah. yours is mine and mine is yours. Right, That's we're not. My, I yeah. worked hard. Like, for that. just be cautious. And this is a person like you know, I'm a little hopeless romantic, but I get real logical when it comes to my money. God damn it. Yeah, just saying. Just I don't. don't. Money causes like one of the most yeah common issues with. A marriage. Right. And, well, you after know, time. time. Right. Is and it's like one, you got right. kids and stuff. So it's like your money is way more important to you than mine's is to me. So speaking of kids, I'm really, really happy that her and Gary and Gary's wife are like yeah. being involved and stuff with. Yeah. Happy Coke with Leah. It's just, yeah, it was Makes really nice to see them all on the boat, like enjoying time together. And kudos to Gary's wife because she's never really. Like, try to do what Mackenzie doing yeah. and try to, like, make her out to be the bad yeah. person. Just like y'all are She's adults, always wanted to be really inclusive. Yeah. Yeah. I, that, that made me happy. Yeah. That's always a good thing. Yeah. So, moving on to Caitlyn and Tyler. Caitlyn and Tyler, I guess they're wanting another baby. Mm-hmm. But Caitlyn, she had really, really bad postpartum depression with Nova. So, she she wants to have another kid, but... She's afraid mm-hmm. to go back into that mental state because it was really bad to where she had to yeah. go away for a while. I think she went to Arizona or something like that. Yeah. And they bought a good good god dang house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like the fourth house since they've been on right. the show. Fourth and like third house and they already it had a trailer at one point. But anyway, they've been able to provide their the roof over their head for quite some time. Right. And um, she had planned to take like her IUD out, but then after a while, she was just like, you know, I don't think it's a good time. We have like yeah. this online shop about to open up, and we're just gonna be really busy with the renovations for the house. And yeah, it was just I don't know, but it's just I know something happened more recently that I'll probably get on the show. We'll talk about it later on. Um, but I was like Tyler and Kaylin, the only. Yes. In all of 16 in pregnant and teen mom history, they're the only original couple st- still together. So, if there's any teenagers, or even older people, hell, because they stupid too, um, let that be a prime example. Like, 
out of all this show and all these couples and everyone who's come together, guess what? There's only one couple that is still happily together. So while you still clinging on to your fuck boy or fuck man or fuck woman, you know, thinking like, you know, maybe we could just make it work yet. 90% chance you won't. That's right. Damn, that sounds really bitter, and I'm really not. I'm really, you know, happy no, and we, open to this love. this is something you have to be super... <laughs> this is something you have to be super, super right. realistic I'm very about. romantic. <laughs> but at the same time, we got to make sure that we don't get with the wrong people. Right. And we've already kind of been there, done that. We're not going to do it again. Yeah, I'm not so we're just get trying God. to tell you guys, don't do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And those that are you more of our age, like 30, late 20s, I will talk early about 30s, you. You know, this is not, this really ain't the time for you to be doing it. Right. So, those that are in their early 20s. Learn from this. Learn from this. <laughs> right. Younger people, it's like, that ain't, all right. I mean, you're going to learn. Older people, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. It, you just you don't know. have the time and energy. Like, I got bills to pay. I don't have to worry about these shenanigans from these fuck boys and fuck girls. Right. So, no, we're not going to do I that. I can take myself out on a date. I don't need to deal with your shenanigans. It's called the Korean spa. Mm-hmm. It's called, you know. TGIT. Yeah. It's, yeah. 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 All those relaxing things where right. you get champagne or wine while you're there. Damn. All the shit my grandma used to say as a kid and I'd look at her like, what the fuck? But in the <laughs> words of her, I could do bad by myself. Right. Like, so... I don't need you. I have work stressing me out. I got bills stressing me out. I got regular day-to-day shit stressing me out. What do I need to get in a relationship with a man to stress me out? Like, no, that's, no. That, that shouldn't be happening. But It's not how I roll. All right, moving on. The only thing I wanted, I just want to say congratulations to the cast of Are You The One for finally fucking getting a perfect match. They did, and it was not the... Uh, um. An original match. Um, mm-hmm. Apparently, it's the first season we've ever watched, but apparently this is the longest that it's ever taken a cast to find a perfect match. A match. But yeah. And it kind of made me happy because it was like one of the guys that was categorized really like as a friend zone person. Yeah. So somebody woke up and said, let me stop trying to deal with these fuck boys and abusers and two good looking Clinton and Ooh. other types. And let me just go over here and find me a nice, simple man. And Yeah, the simple man is the, the, the friend zone. I forget what the girl's title, title was. was. Yeah, but she was definitely not one of the... I'm not going to say she was boring. I'm not going to give her that. But she was just not one of the main girls that's just acting a fool around the house, crying over men that she's known for one day. Right. They finally got the concept like, okay, well... They went from to from five beams down back down to three. Mm-hmm. So they were like, okay, who do we think those three beams are? Right. And the per, per, one of the couples was wind up being this perfect match. Yeah. So they wind up voting them in to go to the truth booth, and then they finally got a perfect match. Mm-hmm. So, but it's only what one episode left. So <laughs> <laughs> they're not winning. They're that not money. winning. A so I mean, dollars. at this point, you might as well just be like, I'm pretty sure that's probably what Uche did. Clinton, I mean, we're not each other's match, but this show's over and we're not going to win any money, so We go can ahead. still continue what right. we doing. Right, give me what I want. <laughs> you know what I want. All of you. <laughs> you know why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> so. And to the girl, oh, there's this one girl, I'm, before we move on, the one girl who was like, you know what, I really think he's my match, you know, I would take a bullet for him. I was like, bitch, what? The Asian. You going to do what? Not Kelly, um... I don't care what her name yeah. is. Yeah. But she was like that this first episode. She was the one that when they all first got in the house the first night, she was talking to him and he was asking her questions about her life. Yeah. And in the confessional, she was like, I've just never had a man just really just want to know these things and truly get to know me. And I'm like, bitch, you ain't never had a man ask you questions? Like, what? You know. Yeah. Like, is the self-esteem that goddamn low? Like, yeah. I thought I have my days where I'm like, no one wants me, but I ain't never. <laughs> I don't think I've ever told a guy or told people about a guy where I felt like I would, I would die for it. them or take a bullet for them. Uh-oh. She in mad. my... <laughs> in my 11 years of getting penis. Well. I have never... 
ever, <laughs> ever thought of being like, you know, if a man with a gun comes up to, you know, me and Sam almost said someone's name. I jump at hell. Nah, look, that bullet is meant who it's meant for. <laughs> and then me. <laughs> I might push you in front of <laughs> and get to your funeral. He was so brave. <laughs> or be like that uh, guitarist in color purple. Oh, time to go. <laughs> <laughs> like, never. So I'm just, man, like. She's weird. Yeah. And, and I it, didn't expect that. And he just said, kept the whole time. He was like, well, I don't think we're a match. He was like, well, yeah. I really, really feel like yeah. we're a match. Only because he said, how are you today? Yeah, like they were the first two episodes, maybe three. They were one of those couples that just instantly were just together. And then he was like, I, he was like, this is my problem. I meet somebody and I get super tangled up in them. And then I don't even realize that they're not even a good match. So he was like, I think I need to kind of step back from you and go see what's going on in the house. Because I don't think you are my match automatically. Why the very next day after he basically, I guess, broke up with her and it was the girl's turn to pick the match. She picked him and he was looking like. Why did you pick me? And even Terrence J was like, but y'all, he just broke up with you. And she was like, well, I think that if something is worth fighting for, it's, I said, bitch. bitch. I'm going to fight you for making right? this dumbass decision. <laughs> America's next top dumb bitch. And she's the reason why they're so, she, that was a perfect example to all the crazy girls in the world yeah. to say, you know what? Keep doing, doing it. you. I said, you now if they turn man. out to be a perfect match, <laughs> Oh, yeah, if they're a perfect match, it's going to be, like, I, I all the so. crazy bitches around the world, like, so my stalking will work. <laughs> it could be me. It is you. No, 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 no. Yeah. Uh, but besides that, the show is really fun. I mean, funny to watch because yeah. it's funny to laugh at everyone. Yeah. And to look at be- beautiful Clinton's face. I mean, that'll never just get old. Beautiful face. mm So, but moving on. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Yeah, it's nothing really talk about yeah, that much, but, but Clinton and Crazy Girl. One positive thing for, for yeah, a change. Finally. And um Blackie and crew are almost ending with the season, thank God. Thank, yeah. I've never been more confused in my life by a show. I'm confused. Well, no, I'm gonna start off. We'll we'll get to the part where you know we're gonna talk about last. Yeah. Um Don has Another child with another woman besides Ashley. Mm-hmm. They have been okay with the parenting, but apparently when he went to go pick up his daughter, she, other baby mom was mad mm-hmm. with a T, mad. And she was mad because he picked her up in a brand new car. Now, let me tell you this. This car was supposed to be Ashley's. Why are you driving it? She knew what that meant. Do they not have another car? It wouldn't be the first couple. (laughs) (laughs) I just thought it was weird. I mean, her ass is sitting at home all day. What she needed for? I want my mouth to stay where it was. I want to sit in the house and look at it. Yes. If it's my brand new car... Like you bought the car for me, right? It's my push gift, right? So why are you are why are you reaping the benefits of it? Because knowing Don's stupid ass, it probably wasn't hers. He probably just bought it and said, "I'll say it's yours." To he put a tiger. He was like, "Hey, I got you a car." Oh no, a Vinky Gumbleson. Like, oh, I got you the car. The notes four hundred dollars. <laughs> I don't even think Ashley's name is on it. I think it probably well Ashley might have co signed it, not new. I mean, he probably does have her social security number. It wouldn't be the first time. Like, oh, yeah, I'm calling my wife now. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Hey, honey. Run that. Oh, you're, you're, you're okay with co-signing? Because I got you a push gift. Oh. <laughs> I just need you as a reference because, you know, the credit stuff. Oh, and man. that bitch. <laughs> my man got me a card. No, bitch. It, you got him a card. I, I and it's funny because when he went around the, car, the corner to go get it, because I was like, hey, may I pop up with a new baby and a new woman? <laughs> 
<laughs> it's so sad. <laughs> but anyway, he went to go, and she got mad because he, he picked her up in a new car, and she felt like, well, I'd be asking you for help, and you having excuses of you got to pay bills, and you show up here in a new car. So he was like, no, you can't have your daughter. Now, you can be mad, yes, but you cannot do that. And they're arguing in front of her. That's... And she's like two or three. Yeah. that That's sad. And you do have a right to be upset, but that is where you take all emotions out of the situation and you simply go to court and you put him on child support and you make him pay. Very rarely, you might be able to get into a co-parenting situation where no courts is needed, you get the financial help that you need, and you guys can coexist. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of parents that wish that that could happen without having to go to court. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, your situation isn't one. You should have known your situation wasn't going to be one. So I I don't understand why, you know, a child's, a court ordered, you know, mandated child support payment hasn't been set up. So essentially, yeah, you could be mad, but essentially also it's your fault. Well, yeah. You put your penis everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm in mean hers. Oh. Hers too, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But sometimes, but I will say this, sometimes right. it's not even that bad. Sometimes yeah. there's some women who make it seem yeah. like it's so bad that you don't yeah. help with nothing. Yeah. And that every time I ask you something for something regarding your daughter, you want to give me an excuse. Oh, and yeah. now you come up in here with the brand new car. Yeah. Granted, yes. Sometimes it's true and sometimes it's not true. But this is how you know she was, she actually came to the house. As she came, sorry, as she came home, she's like, why isn't, I think her name is Kaylee or something yeah. like that. Why isn't Kaylee here? She was like, oh, well, her, her mom wouldn't give her to me because she was mad about the new car. She was like, you know what? I'm just going to go to court so I can like have visitation. And as she was like, I don't think that's a good idea. Mm-hmm. She's like, we're all adults. We should be able to. You know, let's settle it. Right. You know, let's cool off and everything. And, and we're going to try to settle this like adults. I was like, well, Ashley. Even Don was like, is this my wife? I, maybe it's the right. hormones. But kudos to you, Ashley, yeah, for being an adult. It. Because God forbid he has to go to court and that child support order is more than you than he's already given her sometimes. Maybe that's and the reason that's why she said that too. Out. <laughs> right. Like, wait a minute. You don't go from giving her like... Four to five hundred dollars a month to like three thousand, yeah, like, fifteen hundred, <laughs> something like that. Like, yeah, like let's work this out. And, but that's you know, what happened. To, oh shit, yeah. Because she, um, baby mama number one, Kathy. Right, Kathy. There Good we go. Kathy. Never forget her name. <laughs> yeah, Kathy was like, oh no, you got a new wife and you got another kid on the way. Let me take your ass to court. Yeah, and he had to wind up paying like fifteen hundred dollars a month mm-hmm. to one kid. Yeah, but um. And, and so they were all sitting there and the other baby moms yeah. came up. He was like, what are you doing here? She was like, well, I feel like I overreacted and, and, and well, I just wanted her to bring her to you. Yeah. So I think somebody talked to her right? and really was like, you can't do that. Yeah. Just because somebody has a new car. Yes, that might personally frustrate you because you asked them for X, Y, and Z help yeah. for help and they didn't do it and then they show up in a new car. But that should not keep you or keep your daughter from seeing her father. That's just yeah. like really fucked up. Yeah. So, but, and then unfortunately, Don's sister passed away. That was very sad. It was really sad. I know he had said in a couple episodes ago that his sister was battling like mental illness and they found her in like a lake. Yeah. And I guess she jumped off the bridge or something like that. Yeah. And it was just really, really, really yeah, sad. Yeah, I saw the clip. It was. Yeah. And it's, you have to take mental illness very seriously. You can't just be like, oh, people are cowards. Like, you never know what's going yeah. on in somebody's mind. Sometimes people don't have the tools to be for them to be able to cope with some things. So um, I kind of see why he stood up for Cobra when Cobra was going through all that stuff. And she just felt like no one had her back. Mm-hmm. And Don, like, really felt, you know, a, something about it. So that was really sad. Yeah. And then um, Charmaine. 
I, <laughs> I'm just confused. Why would you think that proposing to your boyfriend was going to keep him home instead of working out of the country for six months? Yes. Neek is like some really good engineer. Yeah, but... And he got a job. He had multiple job offers. He took the one in Africa. I'm pretty sure that shit paid like, oh, six months, you get 30K. So she wanted to keep him. And she she grew up in a two-parent household. She did. Okay. She did. The self... Okay. So she called... um, Cat and her cousin and said, Hey, we're buying jewelry. But she was like, I'm actually buying a ring. They were like, Wait, why? Well, he's leaving. I need to make sure that he knows he he can stay here. And I'm like, You can't that's like having a baby just to keep the relationship going. Right. So and then she proposed to him at four and Nikki's housewarming in front of everybody. Court and Bethany. Uh, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! Oh my! God. And he was like, he automatically told her. He said, "I appreciate you doing this and being and oh my god. and being, you know, like humble and all that. You know, yeah, he, kind of humiliating yourself in front yeah. of everybody." But he said, "Baby, this is my job." He's How like, "Dare you?" It's like you kind of took away the whole thing from him, like. Right. So now you are known as a woman who's proposed to a man and got rejected. Yeah. What's worse? Like, I I know that people are just, some people are like, well, you know, if a woman wants to promote, propose, my stance on that will always say, will always stay as a man propose, proposes to a woman. He who finds a wife finds a good thing. So, and then you're proposing because he's taking a job offer in Africa for six months like right. really like he's not moving there and you're like you know what as a commitment to show my relationship you know my love for him it's really because you don't want to be without him for six months was he gonna stop paying the rent in y'all apartment for six months so you had to do something <laughs> like what she gonna wind up being like Leah in a uh, Mr. Lance Bass over there uh j- and get divorced because she can't stand the six or eight weeks being gone. Or in this case, six months, but you getting paid like a lot of people are in a year. You're getting paid in six months. That that's just that's ridiculous. And then if he's probably getting paid enough, I'm like, oh, well, shoot, I'll see you in Africa. We can have a little safari right. for a little while. I can take, you know, now I got a reason to go visit Africa. Yeah, you you probably have the capability to take a good three weeks off and be fine. I the fact so. that he gave you a credit card and you booked a whole trip for the whole Black Nine Mad crew, your man got some good money. So I'm pretty sure he would have flown your ass out there once a month if you wanted to. That's crazy. Yeah, and you know what? I have yet to see on TV mm-hmm. a woman propose to a man... And they willfully, happily accept. Like, even taking it back to the very first Jim Jones and Chrissy. I think when she actually proposed to him, what did he say? He said something like, you wild. Or something like, like you crazy. Or yeah, he did. Something like, it's like, because deep down, there's just some things I feel should just be well, taking Well, taking. I ain't taking no knee. No, even taking the Bible, let's say you just take the Bible out of it. Right. Let's take tradition out of it. Yeah. I feel like a man should be the one to act, to propose to you only because for me and my personal beliefs, I'm supposed to be changing my last name. Right. I'm supposed to be bearing your children. I'm supposed to be the woman of the household. If I'm going to be doing all this, all these things for you and a sense give up my last name for you I need to make sure that we're on the same page and know that you're not a fuck boy yeah I 
couldn't imagine. I would beat the shit out of my daughter if she ever. Daughter somewhere that's never been born yet. <laughs> if you ever. Yeah. It's like, okay, we don't have like dowry and stuff like that. And like, you know, Nigeria and stuff. But the least she can do would be a man. So, like, do women, like, do you go talk to their mom to get their mom's permission? <laughs> <laughs> How does that work? Like, I'm here to ask you Hi, Mrs. Sons. Robinson. <laughs> so, um, I just wanted to have lunch with you today because I really love your son. And, <laughs> you know, I just I just want to know if it's okay if I marry your, your son. Can I get his hand in marriage? <laughs> she going to be like, bitch, what? <laughs> Come again? No. Go away from me with this. <laughs> but um oh yeah and cat and lily hook up which i'm if you're so distraught about what's going on with ryan why would you hook up with somebody else that works in the same damn shop and you barely even know and lily's like i'm just letting you know i like girls she's like oh you like me she's like uh yeah she's like oh well, i live down the street you should come and she went with her. And this whole thing with Ryan and Kat is just so, so irritating. If you... But it goes back. We actually did a poll. And I feel like this personally. If you can go to LA, right? And open up your own shop. You, you moved across the country, well, halfway across the country. You put the money for the deposit, the down payment. You got employees. You got the equipment. You got the tattoo guns and all that kind of stuff. If you can do that in a new state, in a new city, why can't you do the same thing in Chicago? Just not at NIMAG. I don't. Like, you have to be at NIMAG? Mm-hmm. Apparently... Your work precedes you. Right. You don't need Dimag to continue your, your business and to yeah. make money. So why is it so important for you to start and not be at Dimag? Okay, Van, yeah, she was one of the first. She was like, oh, she helped Dimag to get where it is. Well, Ryan was the one that hired everybody to right. work there. So he can just as well hire other artists. There's no, you, Cat don't need to be there and Ryan don't need Cat. Y'all yeah. both can be successful on your own. Right. Just call it quits at this point. But Yeah, it's just it's just ridiculous. I'm tired of hearing about it. I just cuz it's parts of it still ain't making no sense, but I think I've also gotten to the point to where I'm tired of trying to make sense of it. Mhm. I don't trying to figure out between who's lying how is stories keep getting jumbled? Certain stuff that people aren't saying, and it why people are doing what they're doing. I just I don't have. Well, the question I asked on Twitter was, do you think Cat should have gone back to Nine Mag? And then the the choices were yes, she belongs there, and no, be a boss on your own. Eighty two percent said that she can be a boss on her own. You don't need to... This whole situation is stupid. It's stupid, it's stupid, it's stupid. I don't know why you told him. What were you expecting out of it? You were still expecting a friendship? I don't see how that was possible once you went and told Rachel what what y'all had did. And I think I kind of made... Put two and two together Mm -hmm. because I was still confused back to when... When Kat originally told Rachel in Mexico that they had messed around Mm -hmm. and Rachel very calmly went up to the beach house and her and Ryan proceeded to try to physically fight production. Mm -hmm. And people in the comments were like, I forgot what people in the comments are saying, so that doesn't matter. (laughs) But um, fast forward to, I guess, a clip of next week or even this episode, I think Ryan... And Kat messed around when they were both single. Mm. I guess Ryan ended up getting back with Rachel and then either didn't tell Kat and was still trying to get with Kat after he got back with Rachel or he 
just got back with Kat, got back with Rachel, and then Cat felt some type of way. So then that's when she moved to L.A. Mm-hmm. Telling people that she was just ready for a change, but apparently in reality her feelings was real hurt about him getting back with Rachel and stuff. And then apparently even once, according to her, once she moved to L.A., Ryan was still hitting her up and stuff. And so that made her feel a certain type of way. So why didn't you block his damn number? Right. And then even like Rachel's reaction, I was like, well, you know, what? I was really confused. But then I think I even overheard, not overheard, like they were in the next room. (laughs) I heard. Um, I guess Ryan had told Rachel before they started filming about him and Kat's hookup before they got back together. Mm -hmm. So to some extent, well, Rachel already knew. I think what Rachel didn't know about was the whole Lake House, Lake situation. House situation, which is why when he's trying to get her back and she was like, well, are you wasting my time? Like, mm-hmm. you know, that's really what she was interested in. Because even, I guess, when you look back to the vacation episode, when Kat came, mm-hmm. Rachel kind of looked at her a certain type of way, but it was kind of like a, she kind of already knew something, but Rachel doesn't really seem like a Nikki type to just blow up mm, yeah. real quick. Um, and even while as Kat was talking to her, Rachel kind of looked like, why is this bitch talking to me? And she kind of looked like, I already know. Mm. But that's from what I have gathered um, with this whole conspiracy theory. Never in my life of a reality show have I had to go piece through things and lurk through social media comments to figure out why is shit going on. But you know, one thing I'm ha- that, that, that came from the show that I'm happy about that is ending. Oh, and the yes. New York one is starting tomorrow. <laughs> yes, well, yes, yes. you'll be hearing this on Wednesday. So it'll be starting. <laughs> yes. If you're hearing it, it's on. Yeah. <laughs> it's on. You're listening now. <laughs> um, I'm so excited. Cause I yes. love me some sky. Silsa got silk shirts now <laughs> and glossy white teeth. Take them off. <laughs> um, but yeah, that one's, I miss the original cast. Yeah, it's going to be good. I Oh, no shit just had, well, excuse me. What's his name? What's his government name? Richard. Richard Duncan. He find they had, they just had their baby girl. Wait, what? What? What do you mean? She was pregnant again? No, that baby. No, what? I thought she had a miscarriage. Oh, that's right, she did. No, they just he, he just had a baby like a couple of days ago or like a week ago. Uh oh, she's rubbing her temples. Well, I, I'm if he can afford it. Uh, I don't think so. <clears throat> Kathy took him to court. Remember, he had to pay like yeah. fifteen. Like he has one, two, four kids. Yeah, three, four. Yeah. She had a Four yeah, kids? that's right. He did have. She had a miscarriage. Yeah, I guess she got pregnant after that. Oh, okay. Yeah, that timing would have been a way off. Secure the plastic baggie. I mean, it. <laughs> but yeah, so that starts tomorrow. So you'll got you guys will hear about it next. They'll actually be hearing about two black inks because it's yeah. the finale of Chicago and yes. then the premiere of New York. Yes, I'm excited for New York. I'm very excited for you. I'm just kind of glad Chicago's ending because the last seven episodes have been this Cat versus Ryan situation, it's and bullshit. I don't feel bad. She should have known what was coming. Right. I don't think. I don't think. And then she was like, "Well, I don't even watch your man." It's like, well, what? What was the whole point up? of bringing this up if you didn't feel some type of way? Why did say right. anything in the first fucking All place? All the allegations everything that has come out has been on your account. Like I said, I could understand if Ryan was there like talking bad, like fuck cat. She ain't this. She ain't that. And it's like, Oh really? Fuck me. However, but everything that has come out about y'all has been on your account. And then. But what if it was the opposite? What if he was like, yeah, fuck you. So what? Ooh, And, you know, that probably would have been the perfect opportunity for him to do that. Because I feel like from the clip that I've seen from the next episode, they are talking about the shop and Rachel's there. Mm -hmm. And it's about business. And Mm -hmm. out of nowhere, 
all Rachel had said was, or Ryan said, one of them said was, this is my shop. So I make the rules. Mm -hmm. She immediately, Rachel, did he tell you like when he was eating me out and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, whoa, like, why do you even have to go there? Why does that, why did that even have to come out? That's all the more reason that you don't need to be working at Nine Mag. So the minute y'all have a boss employee disagreement, you just gonna be like, "That's why you was trying to fuck me last week." Like, was she trying to become a duchess? Ultimately, that's the only re- that's right. the only reason why you would bring that up, right? Like you just and Rachel's not even like a duchess. She's just yeah. the girlfriend of a tattoo owner. Yeah. Like, owner. and you just, and even when you bought it up, Rachel was still just sitting there like, she's, okay. She's and, one, she's one of them females. I don't want to fuck Yeah, her. cause she's so calm. Oh, she's it's too like, calm. Like, like I mean, besides you, the whole producer thing situation, yeah. overall. Even that, it was like, she processed it. And then five minutes later, she's up there yeah. with Ryan causing hell. But it's like, why do you do all that? And then. Afterwards, you're outside crying to Ryan, talking about some. I never would have thought you would have did me like that. Like you won't even you look at really, me. You, it's like you just tried to ruin my relationship. Why do I want to look at you? Try to do it. Like you. Th- it, th- okay, I'm done talking yeah, about this. I, We're gonna yeah, move on. Nothing. That that's what she said. Going to some Italian bitches. <laughs> Real, Real Housewives of New Jersey. Um, Siggy still pissing me off. It was it. <laughs> You know who's back in the mix, though? To stir the pot even more? Miss Kim D herself. I don't know why they never gave her a... I feel like what they What do did... they have in... I know Peaches in Atlanta. Uh... I don't think Jersey ever had something in their hand. Yeah, Beverly Hills is diamonds, of course. Orange County is orange. Oranges. New York is an apple. Jersey. That should tell you something right there. What? <laughs> you bitches don't get to hold nothing. <laughs> uh, um, wine? I don't. I don't know. Yeah, but yeah, Kim D has her yearly like fashion show, but it this time it's a charity because there were some people who ki- were killed, like her son's friends, or I forget exactly who it was, but she knew them and knew them very well, and so it was supposed to be a charity event. Um, Dolores and Siggy were asked to walk in the show and they told Teresa and Melissa it did not go over well. And of course, Kim D being Kim D. So I heard on the street that <laughs> um, Teresa, you know, starting up a new flame with her ex, like mm-hmm. uh, ex Nigerian love interest. She's accent. like, that's not true. And she's like, Hmm. Like, right? <laughs> she's, she's so messy, right? But she should have been. I think she should have been a cast member yeah. a long time ago. Yeah. Um. And so they're like, no. Just she's like, and Siggy's like, that's gossip. That it shouldn't be repeated. So when they, Dolores and Siggy, told Teresa in the group that we're walking, that's what she said. She's like, what did you say? She was like, well, we told her it was wrong. That's gossip. And then, Dolores, you made the really bad choice of using the words. If it's true, Teresa got that glass and threw it at the wall. It's not true. It's not fucking true. Now, for somebody who always talks about loyalty this and loyalty that, you can't use the words if it is or if it isn't. And you're trying to tell somebody that you should have loyalty to me instead of Danielle. Yeah. Because then it's like, well, now you're being iffy. Yeah, it just... I don't know. When it comes to... I didn't see the episode, but Mm -hmm. just basing it off of, like, what you said. Like, Mm -hmm. so they went and told Teresa what had happened. Mm -hmm. And then... Teresa had asked them, well, what did y'all say? And they said, well, you know, we Mm -hmm. said it wasn't true. Mm -hmm. And then Dolores had, she said, if it's true. She started off the sentence saying, well, if it isn't true, like. Then you shouldn't be upset. Um, No, 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 no. Who shouldn't be upset? Was she trying to say, well, if it isn't true, then you shouldn't be upset or you shouldn't worry about it? She started off the sentence that way, but you can tell. She knew she picked the wrong words. 
She and, said, and she was getting ready to like restart her sentence. Yeah. And once Teresa heard, well, if it is, if it isn't true or something like that, yeah. she just like went red. Which you kind of have no right to get. I feel like you don't really have a right to get mad about because just two, three episodes when a person just came to you and was saying that I said all this stuff, you were kind of looking at me like, well, I mean, I don't know if it's true or not. It's Wait, what, what part? When Danielle went and told um, Teresa that Dolores had said whatever she said about Teresa, and then when Teresa no, we brought her that about up. It, no, yeah, we brought that up. But yeah, so I'm saying it because it's like I know Teresa doesn't like to be questioned on her loyalty or questioned about anything in her life. So if it even sounds like you are questioning anything it becomes a problem but i just no but i was bringing that up because dolores made a defense that we have been friends for 20 years why would you second guess what i'm saying then you turn around and you second do the same thing that Teresa was doing essentially yeah and though we talked a couple episodes ago it's like the only way Teresa is going to feel like there's a small chance that she did say it is because she felt like that in the past about Dolores. Both of them have a fucked up thing yeah, about loyalty. Because, yeah. Because if you're my friend, I'm like, well, I heard this. I'm not going to automatically say that it's not true because right. if you're I, my true friend, then I'm going to ask you like, I don't know. Did you? Um, I heard this on the street, and I just wanted to see if it was true or not. And if you want to talk to me about anything, you can. Type of thing. Yeah, I just and then and then I just don't like how Teresa is so. She's like, you should have stuck up for me. That that yeah. that's because I did see a clip, and that's where she went, and it's like. I've seen several scenarios in this series where women have talked to Teresa about other people and their gossip and their business, and she won't confirm it, but she'll just be like, she'll kind of like confirm it without saying it, or she'll just be like, oh, well, I mean, I I don't don't know who said that. I don't know. Like... Mm. I don't really know. But yet when someone hears a rumor about you, you expect them to just like tear the place down to defend your honor. Like, yeah, she's always like, she's always been that way. She even did that with her own sister-in-law. Exactly. So, and then the whole, if it's true, I mean, Dolores don't know your life. She can only tell you what she sees. I don't think that's true. It's, you know, it's whatever. And then even when she comes to tell you, like, I shut the rumor down, you bite her head off because what she was about to say didn't sound right to you. Well, both of them are wrong. You can't say, but it is kind of weird to say, well, we stuck up for you and told it's not true. And then the next minute you say, well, if it is true, then don't say nothing at all. I mean... That's why I'm like, maybe I need to see the clip. Because I'm like, well, was she about to say, well, if it isn't, she said, if it is true. It was very fast. It wasn't, she didn't do a whole sentence. She, yeah. You can tell in her face that she knew she chose the wrong words. So she was getting ready to start the sentence before she could restart the sentence. Teresa to, to pick up a glass of the restaurant. She probably was going to say, well, if it is true, it's your business. Which. Yeah. But is that factual? If it is true, it's your business, bitch. I ain't going to say shit. Because that's what I would do if one of my friends, someone was like, oh, yeah, she cheating with her husband. It's like, no, she ain't. But it's like, well, shit, I, shit, I don't know. I would just and said, I come to you. I I'm, just would have said, in, if it was me and Kim D, I'd be like, that's none of your business. Yeah, I would have shut it down. And then they came to you so that way you didn't hear it from nobody else in the street. And then it would have made it seem like Siggy and Dolores and Kim D was actually all sitting here talking about you when that wasn't even the case. And they told you, like, this is what's being said. And then that's probably the way I would have said it. You know what this cast just teaches you? This cast 
teaches you to rethink your definitions of different things, to rethink yeah. your definition of friendship, to rethink your definition of loyalty, to rethink your definition of support. Right. Some people have their definitions. That's fine. But sometimes it's just like a really weird definition. Yeah. And see, and that's kind of like a situation where it's kind of like damned if you do, damned if you don't. And that's only- also kind of the reason as to why even me for a personal standpoint, I don't like being the messenger. And sadly to say, I there will it will probably have to be a very, very extreme situation where I even am the messenger because... But in our real world, we've yeah. known each other for 10 years. There has been those situations like, so, B, I kind of heard a rumor about you <laughs> and... I just, is it true? Yeah. Like, I've, we, but there's I've, even in like not our situation, mm-hmm. but even in like life, some people just don't like getting the bad news. And seven times out of 10, they will bite the heads off of the person who delivered the news rather than the person who actually caused the news. Right. Like in this situation, like I said, I didn't see it, but it sounds like your friends not only had your back and shut down the rumor, but they came to you to be like, girl, this is what's going on. First off, that that already tells you something about Teresa, because the very first thing she says, well, what did you say? Not even like, why'd she say that? Where did this? What did you say? And once they told you that they shut it down. And then Dolores was about to say something that you think you didn't like. Then you went throwing shit. Which, once again, if it ain't true, you should just... Girl, it ain't true. I I love my husband through thick and through thin. Why are you getting all mad throwing stuff? If just the idea of, well, if it's true, once again, if it is true, that's between you and your husband and your alleged lover. Ain't got nothing to do with me. So, <laughs> I'm just, like, I feel like she just be wanting diehard loyalty and, you know, she'll get it out of some people. But. I feel like the only person that people that should have any type of, quote unquote, loyalty to each other is just Teresa and Melissa. And if I was Melissa, I and wouldn't even, even have that, no loyalty. Right. I <laughs> would be cordial yeah. with you. But after all that stuff happened about yeah. her being a stripper and a whore right. and like all that and kind of Kim, stuff. Wasn't Kim D the one? Girl, they did a flashback. I, yeah. <laughs> and it was her and Kim D getting their hair mm-hmm. done before the event. Show us. And then that man came and was like, oh, yeah. I, I know. know. And I what was her response? Oh, oh, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to know. You well, didn't he, stand up for your sister. She was like, well, he came to us. We didn't ask about yeah. it. He just told us that. Right. And that was your sister-in-law. But yet you want somebody to just raise hell because they telling somebody a rumor that you hear. Like, no. And on top of that, like, somebody came somebody came to you and said that I had said some shit and I'm telling you I didn't say it or it wasn't said like that. And you've been side-eyeing me ever since. So, hell no, I really ain't about to, like, really go to war for you. I heard a rumor. No, nah, it ain't true. Next. And that would even been a situation. Had they would have even like not said nothing to Teresa because they probably would have been like, I don't know how she going to take it. Right. Then the next episode, it would have been an issue because it's like, Kim D's talking trash and you didn't even tell me. So clearly you were hiding something with her high ass voice. You sound like a country person just now. Because oh, I, I can't do that annoying ass voice. She irks me. I just, I don't know. I expect that type of behavior out of young people. But certain people that's like, you're pushing 50, you got kids. Hmm. Oh, those poor kids. Yeah. Moving on to our next show. <laughs> um, almost done here. I'm married to medicine. There's a lot of what happens when they cheat, you know, is somebody, does it seem like somebody would be cheating or are in the, in the, in a position to cheat ever since what's going on with Dr. Jackie has been going on. Yeah. And 
Toya's oh Toya's like the ditz tits of Mary to Medicine. And I say this because she says stuff that things that are just so like stupid. What? And for example, they went to New Orleans. Um and they were all having a nice little time. And she was like, Well, Jackie, my husband is not having sex with me and he's jacking off. How is my husband jacking off and not having sex with me different than Curtis be have cheating on you? And everybody looked like dumb bitch. Are you fucking stupid? Just dumb bitch. And then being that Dr. Jackie is such a professional and the doctor that she is, she didn't, I guess she tried to not answer it in a personal way. She was like, well, first of all, there's not another party involved. There's no risks of infections or diseases and things of that nature. And then Quab was like, why would you ask something like that? Everybody was just looking like, what the, what's wrong with you? Right. How can you even think to ask if it compares? And it just doesn't set in with her. She just has that dumb gaze of like, well, I'm honest. Or no, you're stupid. Just... And then she went to get have a hissy fit because she asked Kwa, well, like, how often do you have sex uh, per day? And Kwa was like, well, I'm not going to divulge that information to you. She's like, well, I'm not going to say. She was like, well, no, you don't base what you want to say off of what I'm going to say. I'm just going to say I'm not going to give you that information. She's like, well, if I'm going to share, you should share. Kind of reminds me of MJ from Shaws of Sunset yeah. with us. With also just like, well, you guys aren't being open and honest and things of that nature. But yeah, Toya is just, just, and she's 40. Well, just turned 41 at the time on the show. She acts like she's 22 when it comes to maturity sometimes. So people just never stop being stupid. And I wish I had a budget of $150 a day. Yeah. I, when I heard that, I said, so y'all tax problems could like be done by now. I'm like, wait, she doesn't even need $150 a day. I was like, yeah, that's $4,100 a month in just frugal spending. I don't know if that includes groceries or gas or any other like responsibilities that covers the house necessities. But I was like, really? $150 a day? And she was like, oh, yeah, I spent the 150 budget already on this basket. Yeah. So pretty much you just gave it away that you're the one who spends uncontrollably on stupid stuff. Mm-hmm. And you want to complain, like blame the fact that there's nobody else in your family. You're the first one in your respective families to have money. That is such a crock of bullshit that I've ever heard in my life. Right. You felt so, you was like, ooh, shiny money to where you just went ballistic. And when you had to go backwards and not spend money, you had a little hissy you know fit what? attitude. And I hate to say it, but outside of her house, outside of her duties of being a mother mm-hmm. and a wife, she doesn't make the money. So therefore, she doesn't value it, which kind of goes mm-hmm. back to... Yeah. Vicky Gumbelson from Orange County when she was like, when you're out there all day making the money, you'll have a more appreciation for how the money is being bought in. Mm. Which, to a certain extent, I do agree, but then it also just goes back to the fact that Toya's a dumbass. So, of course, she just thinks, she literally probably thinks money grows on trees, and it wasn't until she was hit with that IRS bill and was like, wait, so we can't just go outside and pluck some money? Like, no. Now your husband has to work four hours away and do 12-hour shifts, and you can't have sex. And because she doesn't appreciate where the money's coming from, she's complaining about yeah. the fact that the extra shifts that her right. husband has to do to make up for their IRS problems. Right. You, you just complain about things you shouldn't have to complain for. Yeah. She doesn't have to do the hard work to make the money, so therefore she just, she literally treats it as if, it just grows on trees. A hundred and fifty dollars so. a day. Yeah. Like if somebody gave me a hundred and fifty dollars today and say you gonna get this for the rest of your entire right. life. Right. Of course all my bills and stuff, all my will get paid off. Yeah. Cause that's forty one hundred a month. So by twelve, that's forty almost five thousand dollars a month. 
Wait, no, sorry. Ooh, sorry. I was thinking of 400. That's 48, almost so 50,000. For a whole year, 365 days, that's, that's $54,750. And you are not clocking in and out of anywhere. Yeah. What the fuck? And you're complaining about that? Yeah. That's ridiculous. So, but, you know, at the end of the day, her husband can, she can only do what her husband allows. And he allowed and that clearly, crazy spending habit in the beginning, and yeah. now he's gonna... He's paying for it. Yeah. Literally. Dearly. <laughs> so, um, Dr. G and... Uh, now, I don't know if I, I... I can't remember if I said this in another episode. I didn't understand, and I think a lot of people who are watching previous episodes of Married to Medicine did not understand why Quad was still focusing on business and making on money. the bag, you know, making money before having children. After this season, and it's only been, what, four, three or four episodes? Yeah. I understand why Clearly. this man is like a control freak when With it money. comes to who's making the money. Yeah. But mind you, Quad does make her own money. Mm-hmm. She has, you know, sister circle. She has cookbooks. She has appearances. She has a show, obviously. So the fact that she said, I wrote you a a check for a year's worth of mortgage and you wouldn't take it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's holding that shit over your head. in her face when it's convenient. And I've been taking care of you since the day that I met you. I never heard him take that tone. I said, I've never The yelling, slamming the door. (laughs) And then he drives off in a good, god dang Mini Mini Cooper. Cooper. (laughs) (laughs) You could at least took her car and drove off. Right. Does she got a Panamera or uh, Audi A7 or something like that? Like, come on now. You could have had some 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 bass in some your pizzazz. in your muffler. <laughs> like he was like Nee-nee. Right. <laughs> Typical <laughs> Dr. G. <laughs> yeah, it was. And I'm horrible. like, okay, you know what? This is why sometimes you can't really judge a book by its cover. Now you see the real meat and juice that is Dr. G and Quad. And I just have a better understanding yep. of why she was like, nope, I'm not having any children right now. Let me work on this bag. She had to work on that bag because she felt like you was going to try to use that bag that mm-hmm. you have over her head or take it away from her completely. Right. And that's just absolutely crazy. Mm-hmm. I just, I, I'm in the, the, what he's saying, like, oh, well, if someone cheats, there's always the an, a, an excuse. Yep. There's. Never. Well, what are you supposed to do when your wife doesn't give you any type of attention and you want attention from someone else? You get a fucking divorce. That's what you do. You don't stay in your marriage. That motherfucker has taken a lover within the last three months. Probably. She said, oh, you cheat on me and I don't know that. Right. Or he's, or there's someone that he's about to proposition. So, yeah, Quad. Uh, Once again, this goes back to my earlier argument. Go get tested, make sure everything's fine, and um, keep chasing your bag because you in danger, girl. <laughs> All right, whoopee. <laughs> she wasn't lying. Oh, and then, um, yeah, that episode was kind of crazy. Even Simone and Cecil are still kind of like arguing. They're arguing about communication and how bad it is. Yeah. And they just want to highlight the other problem person's problem when it comes to communication. Yeah. Simone feels like Cecil doesn't want to really do anything. Well, he Cecil doesn't see the effort she puts into when they are at the same house and spending time together. Yeah. But Cecil says you don't really do you don't really spend that time together. You kind of just you're still on your laptop. You're still charting. You're still doing all these things. You're not really doing anything. And sometimes you go straight to your room. So yeah, they need to work that out. Yeah. And last but not least, Roa. Now, yes, good old. It's it started off with the ending of the party, the white girls and gays party, and of course, Kim wanted to rip. King's face off. 
Mm-hmm. Um, which is like, oh, well, you know, I mean, yeah, she felt like her daughter was being threatened or not threatened, talked about. So she wanted to defend her honor and defend thy name. <laughs> and she wanted to rip her head off. But um, as I said this last episode, they're both wrong. They're both really, really wrong in yeah. my in my book. And um I asked and on Twitter, are you Team Kim or Team Kenya? It was fifty five percent for Kenya and forty five cent for Kim. It was really teeter totter between the both of them. Yeah. It's like people's points for saying that Kim was right were valid and then the points of why Kenya was right were valid but they're both wrong just like they both have points that are valid they're both wrong yeah and um once again Kenya kind of repeated you know I asked her like why does she have her heart on for me didn't she have her removed and during her trans um gender reassignment surgery yeah now, I mentioned in the last episode that for some reason the cast of Real Housewives of Atlanta want to continuously use the gay community as insult. insults and slurs, even though they claim that, that they love the gays. They love the gays. We and have gays that do our hair and we go to brunch and we laugh and we gossip. It's like, yeah, but they're still real fucking people, dumbasses. And it has to be black women. Yeah. That this is always an issue with. Like, right. there was a gay man on New Jersey, never came up. There was a gay man on Beverly Hills. Never came up. Don't forget about Rosie. Yeah, Rosie. Kathy Wakili's right. sister. There was a gay person on Orange County. Mm-hmm. Never came up. These gay remarks and rumors of someone being gay. Wait, never... the only one in time it happened, Eddie, in Orange County. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh. That's the... That was big. Yeah. Yeah. But that's the only and, time and only, it's come yeah, up. Yeah. It always, 90, out of all the millions. Shit, Dallas too. Shit. Oh yeah, dick sucked at the roundup. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Okay, ninety six percent of the time it's still <laughs> yeah <laughs> at <laughs> but Atlanta it's Atlanta who have they have been talked to yeah multiple times yeah by Andy yeah. Andy's probably have to talk to New, yeah. New Jersey once yeah New Jersey once. And I don't think he said that much towards Dallas. Yeah. And nothing really came up for OC. Yeah, it was Because they were like, saying, like, he's you, gay, but they're yeah. not, like, trying to insult the gay yeah, community. Yeah, it was you just know. like, why would you... You're, you're supposed to be my best friend. Why would you say that? Yeah, and it's funny because their rebuttal, which kind of does make me mad, it's always, I have friends that are gay, which is no different than confronting a white person about a white um, supremacist yeah about you know or somebody a racial slur that they've used and their first response is i i'm not racist i I have have black black friends friends. like what that doesn't make it any less ignorant yeah and so we were telling you that we have a, a a dear 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 friend of ours named marcus and um he is just an awesome person who Mm -hmm. happens to be gay and he heard our episode he actually sent us some t-mail kind of wanted to share with you guys kind of how he feels being not only uh, a black man but a gay man as well Mm -hmm. because it's really hard and sometimes people think that one's harder than the other but imagine being both Both. so he sent us an email and it says hey y'all I just wanted to go a little more in depth about the gays and the black community. Here is my story. A few months ago, a Facebook friend reposted a comment from another Facebook user, pretty much saying, if Kaepernick was gay and fighting for gay rights, he will be considered a hero. So I commented, I disagree. I think it would be a lot worse. And it escalated to me having to defend my comment to four other women. Mm -hmm. And it also says, 
the basis of it was gay rights are being seen as more important than black rights. So I was being put in a place where I had to choose gay rights or black rights. And to be honest, my life has been a lot worse as a gay man than a black man. My other gay friends of color have faced the same problem. Our rights as gay men have been ripped away. Fired from jobs, not being able to marry the love of our lives, having to lead secret lives. But you want me to worry only about black rights? Where were the rallies and marches when I was being called a faggot by another black person, by the way, back when I was in middle school and high school. Trans people of color are constantly disappearing. Gay and lesbians are being murdered. Even recently, a six-year-old boy was tortured and killed by his father because he thought he was going to be gay. This is reality. The black community, as you mentioned on the show, says they are for the gays and they support the gays rights, but are the first ones to make slurs or try to make us seem like we are bad. But you want your hair done. You want fashion advice. You want us to play in the church choir. How can you be down for one cause, but can't be down for the other, but you want to, excuse me, but you want to throw in, They see your skin first. That can't be said when a straight person of color who has never met me before is quick to call me a faggot because I decided to wear booty shorts on a 104 degree day. All of these causes fall under the same fight, equality. The gay community has consistently fought against discrimination for everyone, but we never get that back in return from our own communities. Thank you, Marcus, for giving us that. And that's pretty much what we were trying to say. Yeah. Last last episode. I, yeah, I believe it, and I've <coughs> I've seen it firsthand. Um, if you look on like Instagram sites like the Shade Room, they what was the last post they posted? I believe they posted something a few weeks ago about um fitness instructor Shanti. Um, oh yeah, yes, him and his he, husband just yeah, twins. him and his husband. They just um, adopted. Well, I don't know if they adopted. Sorry, they had a surrogate. Yeah, or if they use a surrogate, they welcomed twins. And so the picture showed both Shanti and his husband. Both, um, what's that term called? A skin to skin bonding. Yes, they were doing skin to skin bonding with their baby. And in the comments. of them were very homophobic comments and they were all from black people. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them were from black men, but yet let the shade room post, you know, a video clip of like, you know, a black man shablamming or, you know. What's shablamming? Oh, that's when they do that little kick and spin and drop. Oh, that's what it's called? Yeah, it's called shablam. Oh, I thought it was called the drop or something. It's I've, I've heard shablam. But um, it could there's yeah. different names. Yeah. Sorry, continue. Oh no. <laughs> and you know, let them do something and it's like, yes, yes, yes. It's like Yes, bitch. Yes, but it's like the minute, you know, God forbid y'all get in an argument about something or y'all ain't friends or it's a real serious issue of like, oh yeah, you know, me and my husband we want kids. Well, I don't believe in that. Like, but <laughs> now all of a sudden it's it's a lot of ignorance. Unfortunately, and correct me if I'm wrong, I feel like Kenya actually has done that the most. Yeah, because she is always She the did one. that about Walter. Yeah, she's always the one as soon as like her and a guy she's dating it doesn't work out, she's quick to want to call them gay. Um, she's quick to attack people's marriages saying, oh, well, I heard a rumor that your husband's gay. And she did that with Kim Fields and yeah. her husband she, uh, and egged it on continuously. Yeah. She's done it. Uh, yeah. There's at least three to four different occasions Scenarios, that she's yeah. done that and is supposed to be malicious. Yeah. And you're not supposed to do that. Now you have people like Nene who's just, who does it, but they don't think. Yeah. 
Like, they just don't think. Like, Tylen, you know, saying, oh, bring your best gay friend. Like, right. they're a shiny object or something or a pet. Yeah. You know, people just don't think. But I feel like the one person who's used it really maliciously to try to hurt someone. <gasps> That's why Marlo will never get a peach on Roa. Why? Because about three, four seasons ago when she got in that argument with Sheree and she was like, you can go back and hang out with them faggots that you... That is why. Oh, yeah. Andy, yeah, you can come be messy for, you know, get a little check here or there. Yeah. Girl. Right, right, right. I forgot about that. Yeah. It just occurred to me. We're saying all that to say, like, even more than Real Housewives of Atlanta, you can't try to use that to try to tear down someone or defame someone and you're just really just slapping the gay community in the face mm-hmm. big time and as right. you can hear from what my friend said in the our friend said in the email you guys have to really think about what you say right and doing what kenya did and you know people go through a huge process to, to have, have a gender yeah. reassignment The same surgery. way her feelings was hurt when, you know, Phaedra and other people mocked her for having scrambled eggs or not being able to have kids. Like, very hurtful if you actually are a woman that struggles with it. Mm-hmm. But the same way that you, my point being, the same way that you would take that offensive, it's the same way, you know, Right. These little insults where you're just calling somebody a faggot or you're just calling them gay because not because you have any type of proof or anything. And even because if Because your did, relationship yeah. didn't didn't go right. well. Then all of a sudden that they're gay. Like I'm such a fabulous woman. They're probably you know what? They're gay. It's like right. why would that's you, yeah. not like come on now for real. And then if that was true, why are you dating a gay man? Yeah. Hmm? Like that, that don't make no kind of sense right. to me. Well, and you're if asking anything, to be okay, the beard. So like, he's bisexual. So I mean, but, the, but the, yeah. there's nothing it's, wrong with that. Yeah, that's if he not is something to shame anybody that, or the community about your because place. you're trying to be shady. Yeah, like that's not your place to out him. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's just you know. not a good look, but. Uh, well, we've come to the end. Yes. I don't know if yes. you have anything to say to the wonderful tea sippers out there. Um, We really appreciated that letter. Um, So, yes, once again, send us your questions, your comments, your concerns. If you have any of your own life issues or questions you want to get some unbiased advice about, mm. send it to us. We love to listen. Right. You guys are probably a lot more interesting than some of these people we give our time to. <laughs> right. Yes. And you always send us an email at realityv at gmail.com. R-E-A-L-I-T-E-A-V at gmail.com. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Mm-hmm. All three. The big three. And we will see you next week. Well, talk to you next week, I should say. Have a good week. Bye, y'all.